Hello world, this is Random Fix, and in front of me I have the X-Tool PS701 Pro. So in this video today, I'm gonna show you guys what's included. We're gonna go ahead and try out some of the different functions of this bi-directional scan tool here. And then lastly, I'm gonna go ahead and give this a Random Fix tool grade so you can make a better decision for yourself. And before you guys ask, yes, this has lifetime updates. However, it's only for Japanese vehicles, stay tuned. Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. So we got the PS701 Pro, and this is gonna work for your Hondas, Toyotas, Nissans, Mazdas, Mitsubishis, and Isuzu's 1996 and newer. So it is OBD2, and it claims it can access some pretty impressive data portals on your vehicle. So we're gonna go ahead and put this to the test. Let's check out what's inside the box, and then we'll hop inside the vehicle. Let's go ahead and turn this on, and I already did an update on this, and to go ahead and activate this device, all you need is an email address. There's no serial numbers or passwords to type in. When I first started it, these were all the available updates. And again, it just took an email address to go ahead and activate. And then we get a nice pouch in here. And inside the pouch, do you get some different plugs? We got the EU plug. And I'm not really sure what this is right here, but it does not seem to look like a US plug. You get a charging brick. I just use my Android USB-C charger to go ahead and top off the battery and this is the included USB-C cable and if you guys are new to USB-C it's a great interface and the best thing is you could put it in either way and it will work and I love USB-C and to connect this to the vehicle we're gonna go ahead and use the Bluetooth connection here from the device so this is gonna have nothing attached to it and on the vehicle side, we're gonna go ahead and attach the Bluetooth interface here to the wire. And on this side right here, we're gonna go ahead and attach the correct corresponding adapter. And in North America, we use the OBD2 16 port connector. And there we go, now I have the connector attached. And this is gonna work for any vehicle 1996 and newer. And if you have to use a specialty port, you can go ahead and use these other two interfaces here so this is for nissan and we also get one for honda and keep in mind that 95 percent of the time you're going to be using this obd2 port right here so you're going to be good to go now let's go ahead and grab this and let's attach it to the vehicle and to connect this to your vehicle on 90 percent of vehicles the connector is going to be in that wheel well area and it's really easy to go ahead and locate mine is right there and you want to look around this area in case you can't locate yours and once you plug it in you're gonna see the lights turn green and once you have this connected to the vehicle it is super important to go ahead and turn on the ignition so you want to see the check engine light on however the vehicle engine should not be running and since this has a Bluetooth range of about 10 meters, I can stay inside the vehicle or I can go ahead and work from the comfort of my garage. And this is what I love about the Bluetooth enabled scan tools. And because there's a lot of wind today, let's go ahead and work from the vehicle today. So we're in the vehicle now. The check engine light is on, so the ignition's on and the device is connected. And let's go ahead and talk about the main interface here. And the main interface is really easy to understand. So we have a nice display here and it's very easy to read. We have a diagnosis button right here, update. And the updates are really easy once you go ahead and connect it to Wi-Fi. You hit the button and if there's any new updates available, it'll go ahead and just allow you to install them right from this screen. Then we have a settings button and this is where you can go ahead and turn off the Bluetooth and increase and decrease the brightness. Go ahead and choose miles versus kilometers. And again, nothing fancy, very simple to understand. If you're used to working with an Android phone, this is the exact same thing. It's an Android phone with just a different interface. We have reports. And again, this is my very first time using this. And I try to record these moments for you guys. So you guys get the same experience as I do. And there is nothing staged. And I do appreciate Xtool sending me this tool. However, I try to keep it real for you guys. And I want to thank Xtool for allowing me to do this. 
as on previous reviews I've always given my honest feedback and they've never once said anything bad about what I'm trying to help them do which is to create a better scan tool so that way you guys get a better bang for your buck we have a report section here we have the quick guide here and the quick guide will basically walk you through how to use this scan tool here so to navigate the tool is really easy we have the main interface up here with the touch screen then we have a back button we have OK we have left right up and down arrows let's go ahead and access the vehicle information here by hitting diagnose and we can do a VIN check we can check OBD2 so OBD2 is going to stand for onboard diagnostics protocol 2 and this started in 1996 so you can buy a regular OBD2 scanner for about 30 40 bucks the real reason you should be getting this is because of this option right here this is going to allow you to access the OEM side of the vehicle so we're going to go ahead and choose Toyota here and these are all the makes so Lexus included in here obviously that's just a Toyota product this is really weird I have Lexus and Toyota and there's Honda but there's no Acura here so I don't know what to say about that but let's go to Toyota here and now you want to go ahead and choose the region so we're in the USA we're going to try automatic detection. This vehicle does not have radar crews. And that's pretty impressive. The VIN number was able to get detected automatically. It chooses all the right options for me. Select OK. I'm going to go ahead and attempt to do an auto scan. And now it's going to go ahead and check all the different modules that are available on my vehicle. And so the newer your vehicle is, the more computers you will have. On my vehicle, I have over 20 computers. And let's see if this is able to detect all of them. Now that the scan is complete, we can see that it was able to access all the different modules. And if my vehicle had any faults, it would go ahead and display them for me right here. And then I can just select that particular module and hit diagnose. And then it will access that module. So we have a read option on this. The scan tool is able to clear. I'm able to go ahead and view live data. Let's check out the live data field here and see how well it works. And now I'm going to go ahead and select four different functions here to see how it's going to display the data for me. So these are going to be the four items I selected. And when I start the vehicle, I'm able to see the information and there's really no lag. This is nice. Or I can go ahead and select all of these different fields, hit OK. And now it will display for me on screen here all the different fields that are available. So I got the true mileage here. So in case you're buying a vehicle and it, the vehicle just seems a little bit rough, you may want to look at this total travel distance as there's going to be a lot of odometer fraud on the market, especially with used car prices. And this will save you from that headache. And you get a pretty long list of available live data fields here. Let's go to actuation test and the actuation tests are really nice to have on a scan tool because now instead of just reading the information from the vehicle, I'm able to actually send a command to the vehicle instead. So let me do something you guys can actually almost hear. Let's go ahead and turn on the fan here and it's going to ask me if I want to go and monitor the data as it's sending the command. I'm going to select no and I'm going to turn on the fan and I can hear that the fan is running now. It is going to be running on low. And if I want to turn it off, I can. There it goes. The fan is off now. This is a really nice test as well. So if you have a vehicle that has one of those fuel doors that opens up with a bun, sometimes the bun breaks and people end up replacing the motor instead. Let's see if this actually communicates because some of the cheaper scan tools like this don't actually allow you to do this. And, and yet it's actually displayed here on the screen as an option. So let's turn this on to see if it works. And we can see here that this function is not supported. And this is the complete list of the actuation tests that are available for the engine control module on this vehicle. So now I turn on the water pump and it's spinning at 2920. If my vehicle was overheating and the RPM on the water pump is supposed to be at 3000, however, it was only spinning at about 1500 RPM, it would go ahead and be a potential cause of why my vehicle is overheating. So I'm going to go ahead and turn this off. And we have a special functions button here as well. We have a check mode. 
a VIN mode, and a reset mode. And if we go back to the main menu here, let's select Toyota one more time. I just wanted to show you there's also a reset button here as well. So if you wanted to go ahead and reset maybe an oil or reminder light, you could. And in my case right here, my vehicle is not listed. So this right here does work some of the time, but it's not guaranteed to. So my biggest takeaway from this video is if you guys have a vehicle, make sure whatever feature you're looking for is supported. So email the vendor. I'll have a link to their email in the video description before you go ahead and buy. Choose the system that we want. So these are the different systems we're able to access. So we have the engine, hybrid control, motor generator, cruise control, ABS, the TPMS system. And I'm gonna scroll down and this is the complete list here. And let's go to the driver door motor here and go to actuation test. Let's see if this is successful in communicating with the vehicle to roll the window up and down. I'm gonna show you guys this live. We'll hit up. There it goes. Let's try that one more time. Pretty cool. So it is able to communicate. Let's go to special functions. And this is not supported here. So sometimes on certain vehicles, you're gonna have to go and do a window calibration. So make sure you reach out to the vendor if you guys have anything very specific before you buy this. And there's gonna be little glitches like this. This is a update or something. I hit OK. It doesn't disappear. I have to basically hit this little X. Now that we know that it can go ahead and communicate with the vehicle, it can access live data, it can go and do some basic actuation tests. Let's go ahead and throw a couple of problems at the scan tool here. So I'm going to activate a check engine light and also an airbag light and see if this is able to detect it and also erase it. Hey everybody, now I have a check engine light on right there i also have an airbag light on right there and now let's see if this is able to detect it and also erase it let's do an auto scan again so now let's take a look at this we can see it found the check engine light errors right there and also for the airbag system so let's go read the check engine light data right here we can read the codes so here's all the codes. These are confirmed. These are pending. Let's go ahead and clear this now. Hit OK. It's done. Let's see if we could read them. OK, so it cleared the check engine light data. Let's go into the SRS system. It gives me a little description there on what that module does. It gives me the two codes here and the B stands for body. So the SRS system is related to the body system here. And this is a current code and this is a history code. Let's go back. We'll go ahead and clear this. The success, the erase was successful. Let's go and try to read it. The code is gone. And now let's go ahead and start the vehicle to see if it actually cleared. We can see that the check engine light is gone. So is the airbag light. So this is successful in resetting the issue after it's been fixed. So that definitely gets a thumbs up for me as there was no errors on here. And now let's go ahead and give this a random fixed tool grade so you guys can make a better decision for yourself. All right, folks, it's my favorite part of the video. This is where the PS701 Pro is going to get a random fixed tool grade. And this is going to get a 78 out of 100. I'm going to display the score here on the screen so you guys can take a look at how the factoring is actually broken down. And what I really like about the unit is the fact that it's under $300. It's a complete package, so they included it, everything that you would want. The case, it's got Bluetooth support, so you can work from the comfort of your garage. We got the legacy adapter for Nissan and Honda, and it had lifetime updates, bi-directional support, and one-click updates made it really simple, so you don't have to go and sit there spending hours on activating the scan tool. I hope you guys appreciated this video. And I appreciate the vendor allowing me to do such honest review. 
And as always, make it a great day. We'll see you guys on the next one. If you guys are new to the channel, go ahead and hit that subscribe button right there. If you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up. And I'll leave you guys a nice little playlist right here if you guys want to learn more about scan tools. Thanks.